And this stirring West Country welcome for Exeter City comes from a crowd which began to assemble inside St James's Park at half past four this afternoon when the gates opened. Most of them hoping to see the third division team reach the sixth round for only the second time in their history. Exeter are unchanged from Saturday. Number nine, Tony Callow, is the highest domestic scorer in English football this season with 25. And he's partnered up front by number eight, Peter Rogers, who is a cousin of number two, Martin Rogers. But the two centre-backs are not related. Number six is the Welsh international, Phil Roberts. And number five, Lee Roberts, scored the goal you've seen, which made this replay possible. And just completing the back four there, number three, John Sparrow, signed last month from Chelsea. Newcastle field the team which finished the first match. Bobby Shinton has joined their growing injury list, and that means Saturday's scorer, Alan Shoulder, is now in the starting lineup. The last time that Shoulder and number two, Steve Carney, played in a fifth round replay was for Blythe Spartans three years ago against Wrexham. The same referee as on Saturday, Ron Bridges, the FIFA official from D side. So it's second division Newcastle wearing yellow tonight who start the match playing from the left. Exeter of the third division in red and white stripes. There goes Peter Rogers and across goes Stuart. side by Peter Hatch and somehow or other Kevin Carr succeeded only in turning that in with 14 minutes gone Exeter City have taken the lead from an in-swinging corner that they were working on all this morning Kello that's Johnson with him So another one of these in-swinging corners which produce the goal. Hatch leaving this one short. Here he is again though. Hatch is shot and he can tank them with either foot, this number 11. Especially the left. And he's also got a long throw too. Lee Roberts is doing the dummy. Pearson! Two! scores a beautiful hook shot and Hatch again involved in the build-up this time with the long throw again the Newcastle defense in complete confusion the long throw caused them the problem Lee Roberts is dummy the ball span off the defender and look at Pearson number seven he saw it coming down on the volley and that's a superb finish the man who was in an offside position not interfering with play 2-0 to Exeter, the Pearson goal from the Hatch build-up, putting the third division side completely in charge with only 20 minutes left. Good running by Dick Forbes from midfield. Coming back again to Hatch. Hatch's cross. That's awkward for Newcastle as well. Volleyed away in the end by Carney. Phil Roberts heads it back. There's a Newcastle defender cross right in the penalty area and he's put them all on side and here's Hatch. And number three is that it's gone in. Rogers came in there. And Peter Rogers from a cross by Hatch again makes it 3-0 and look what happened the defender he's injured the referee has not stopped the game and he's put Hatch onside very unlucky that for Newcastle 
but as the cross comes over, watch for Peter Rogers, number eight, because there he is, getting in front of Kello. Rogers scored it, it's 3-0. And Kenny Wharton has been carried off behind the goal. And Newcastle, as if they haven't got enough trouble, are currently down to ten men, and we'll have to make a decision about whether to bring on John Brownlee. Meanwhile, on the Exeter bench, I shouldn't think Brian Godfrey can believe it. Three up in the first half. There are three minutes of normal time remaining, and the score remains at 3-0. That was uh, Halliday coming out with the header. Could be a long throw again here for Exeter if Hatch goes to take it. Kello is on the near post. There he is. Kello back to Sparrow. Martin Rogers! Well, he came from nowhere. 4 0. Well, the right back stole in, and Martin Rogers scores his first goal for Exeter. And what a way to score it. The defence was just losing their concentration. He mishit it, I think, really, but it went in the near post. Fans on the pitch for a moment have delayed the restart. Two of them have been ushered away. And that completes a very, a very happy and successful evening for him. And Brian Godfrey hears the final whistle, and the crowd salutes. Third Division, Exeter City, who are through to the sixth round in the company of seven First Division teams. They'll play away to Spurs, and they have demolished and almost demoralised, I would think, Second Division Newcastle, who go off beaten by four goals to nil. Exeter, having put out Leicester in the last round, thus become the surviving giant killers in this year's competition, and that'll make it a very happy night for their players and for their manager, Brian Godfrey. Congratulations, Brian. How did that performance compare with the victory over Leicester in the last round? Well, just a sweet, really, John. You know, uh, tremendous performance and uh, the crowd, everything, you know, a great night for the club itself, yeah. You only saved the first match in the last few minutes, so what made the big difference in tonight's replay? Well, we were prepared to come out and play. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to attack at Newcastle. Um, you know, I've been reading in the papers where we're a defensive side, and I've said all along we're not. You know, but tonight we got people forward, and uh, we had the extra man tonight because we had that uh, great crowd behind us, and uh, that was the big difference, I think. Yeah. And the goals coming as they did. You're a great set piece team, aren't you? I watched you in training this morning when you were trying a few things out, and the homework certainly paid off. Well, yeah, we'd watched Newcastle, and we realised they got it, uh, 11 men back into the box, and. Uh, we knew we could affect every player and we could still leave one or two of our spare and uh, as you say you watched them this morning and it worked tonight and the second goal uh, pearson's goal probably one of the best that has been scored on this ground this season oh yeah great goal you know again uh, good good thinking by the boy you know he, he got it and turned and just hooked it over his head and, and we had people in there anyway if it had gone wide there was somebody else who was coming in on the end of it and, uh...